Hey kids, Charlie Abuso here again. We're going to do thermochemistry zoom number two for class number two. We're going to do the notes from number 30 to number 52. This should be pretty short. Uh, you're going to need a calculator. You're going to need your reference table. I have my reference table right here. And as I glance around, it looks like I'm going to use my cell phone calculator. But you better have a calculator. Now, question 30. It takes 334 joules to melt one gram of ice at the melting point. That's called the heat of fusion. It's a constant for water. That's in table B. There's no temperature change. It happens at 273 Kelvin, or it also happens at zero degrees centigrade. How much energy does it take to melt a real ice cube, like the one in this person's hand? And I say that it's 73 and a half grams. Now, you could probably grunt it out if you know it takes 334 joules to melt one gram. It would just be a multiplication problem. But on the back of the reference table, in a section called heat, there are three formulas. I'm going to ask you to write on this now. The middle one is the one we're going to use. I'm going to write the word cold. Yeah. And that's going to be for the cold phase change. We're going to use that formula, Q equals M H of F, for all thermochemistry problems that are going to be melting or freezing. Two directions. Either way, it's the same amount. So we're going to write this down. What the heck do these letters mean? That's a little scary, but look, look what we got. We got all the explanations here for what's going on. Q is equal to the heat. Now I'm going to ask you to write something else now in joules. See what I wrote? Where is it? Heat in joules. M is mass, and I'm going to write in there in grams. See how I wrote that there? Let's see where it is. In grams. So there's a lot more stuff. We'll write more stuff on this later, but for now, we have an ice cube and we want to melt it. How much energy does it take? The energy is called Q. That's the, the variable. Q is the amount of heat in joules. Now, how cool is this? There's a formula. The amount of energy is going to be equal to the M mass times a constant. Now, what is that constant? Well, also in here, it tells you H of F is the heat of fusion constant, which unfortunately is in table B. So you have to write a formula. There's a lot, there's three formulas. You're going to mix yourself up, write the formula. Second step, let's fill things in. What is Q? Q is the unknown. What is the M, the mass? Well, in this problem, it's 73 and a half grams. How big is your ice cube? 73.5 grams. What is H of F? H of F is the heat of fusion constant. Now I'm going to write on table B right now. And I'm going to ask you to do that also. Right next to heat of fusion, H sub F. Now, I like to use a capital F. When I type it, I think it looks better, easy to see than a lowercase f. A lowercase f is fine. Heat of fusion. In fact, I think they used a lowercase f on the back. See it? Doesn't matter. F. What is the heat of fusion constant for water? The H2O, 334 joules per gram. Now, when you have a mathematical process like this, grams times joules per gram, I hope you can see pretty quickly that the grams in the numerator are going to cancel with the grams in the denominator. And after we do the numbers, the only unit left is going to be joules, which is exactly what we want. It's going to equal joules. So 73 and a half times 334 is 24,549. The grams cancel, but we can only have three significant figures. So we're going to round that to 24,500. Now this is the truth. Think about it. If you have a, an, a, an ice cube that fits in your hand, like a good size ice cube, a normal good size ice cube, 73 and a half grams, you could melt that. Now you could hold it in your hand and your hand would probably get too cold. You could put it in your other hand and then this hand will get too cold. You could put it back. You could put it down your back of your shirt and get a little chilly, but your body could easily generate this much energy. Now, it's hard to know how much energy, but an ice cube the size of that one in, in, in a man's hand there, it would take about 25,000 joules. How big is a joule? Not so big. 
little bit of energy. It's going to take a lot of them to melt that ice cube. But you could easily do that probably in just left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, maybe left hand again. Maybe it'll take five, unless you're tough and you can, or you're having a fever. <laughs> Don't have a fever now. It's a bad joke. It reminds me of a Madonna song, Fever, but I digress. Now, isn't this a cool picture? You can do this. You need, you need two people, one with a really good camera. You got to have a pretty good location. It's got to be a really, really, really cold day. And you go out with a, a can or a glass of water and you just throw it over your head. And as the water spreads out, it's so cold, it will all freeze at the same time. This is pretty cool. You could do this. It's the winter. I'm pointing this outside. It's the winter. You could try this on a very cold day. Okay. Now, if you have 125 grams of pure water, 125 grams. Now, a gram is an ml. This has 355 mls, 355 grams. So it's about this much water. If you have this much water and it's at zero degrees, it's really cold, but it's a liquid. How much energy must be removed in order to make that a solid? How many joules, energies and joules in our class, um, how much energy must be removed to make that 125 grams of really cold water look like that, solid, snow, ice. Ready? Well, this is a cold phase change formula. So in the back of the reference table, we're going to use the cold phase change formula, which we're going to write down. Again, I like capital F because it looks better when I type it. I think. It's a personal choice. Q is the amount of energy in joules. M is the mass in grams. And heat diffusion constant, well, that's this. Heat diffusion constant. Every substance has a heat diffusion constant. We only have them listed for water. But there's more. We just, we're talking about water. So how do we solve this? Q is the unknown. The mass is 125 grams. And in order to freeze one gram of water, we have to remove the heat of fusion constants worth of energy, 334 joules per gram. That will allow one gram of really cold liquid water become one gram of solid ice. The grams in the numerator and the denominator cancel. And the answer comes out in joules, which is good. And it has to have three significant figures. I point out 125 grams, three significant figures. 334 is unlimited. So the answer is rounded to three significant figures in the mass. This is not hard, right? I'm good at this. Your smart combination is perfect. It's like, it's like tomatoes on a salad, a perfect combination. Maybe chocolate and peanut butter, perfect combination. All right, look at this. Here comes a steam kettle. I got a nice picture, right? It's a really pretty one. You can really look at this picture. You can see that really bright light. That looks like the, either the flash or it's probably a window in the kitchen. And there's the steam coming out. And it says, it takes 2,260 joules to vaporize one gram of H2O at the boiling point. And so I'm gonna write on the back of my reference table, this. I'm going to add right here, hot. We're gonna use this formula for the hot phase change hot phase change. We're going to now vaporize or we're going to condense. Either way, it's the same formula. It takes 2,260 joules to vaporize one gram of water at the boiling point. That's the flat part at the top. There's no temperature change. What happens is it goes from the hot liquid to the gas. And we're going to vaporize using 73 and a half grams of water. So you're going to put a pot of water on here is my can. It's going to be about this much, 73 and a half grams of water. The amount of energy to turn that much liquid water that's hot already into a gas. Now to do this, we need the formula. We're going to write that down right now. The hot phase change formula, Q equals MH of V. Now they use a lowercase v. I like the capitals. There's the formula. What is Q equal? Still equals heat in joules. What's the M equal? still equals mass in grams. And what is the heat of vaporization constant? Well, in table B, I'm gonna ask you to write something there also. The heat of vaporization constant, sorry. That's H of V, and look at the number. 2260 joules per gram. So we have our formula. Let's fill in what we know. We don't know Q. 
that's what's unknown, how much energy in joules. The mass is 73 and a half grams. And the constant for the hot phase change, the heat of vaporization constant is 2,260 joules per gram. Now, you gotta multiply these numbers. The grams in the numerator cancel the grams in the denominator, and it comes out in joules. 73 and a half times 2260, get your calculator. Get your calculator, make sure you know where this number comes from so you don't make dopey mistakes. Teach your fingers how to do this. <clears throat> Round it to three significant figures. 73.5 grams is three significant figures. 2,260 joules per gram, that is unlimited. It's not a measurement, it's a constant, okay? That's how much energy it takes to do that. That's a lot more energy, right? Harder for you to think about Make You know how you can make that much energy? You hook up your stationary bike to an electrical generator and you can do that. You gotta pedal for a while to make that much energy come out. All right, I like this because this is true to life. If you are dumb and you stick your finger into the steam coming out of a tea kettle, 2.75 grams of steam condenses into 2.75 grams of water. It goes from the crazy gas to the fast moving liquid, but that's much more stable. Where did, how did it get stable? It releases heat. How much energy of heat is released, unfortunately, into your finger if you're dumb? If this happens, you don't get a little, cute little Band-Aid. That's a cute little Band-Aid. I'm stuck on Band-Aids because Band-Aids are stuck on me. Now, 2.75 grams of water, you get steam condensed on your finger, you go to the emergency room, and they might have to give you some strong medicine to take the pain away. And honestly, a large part of your finger may have to be removed. This is a lot of energy. You can really hurt yourself. Blisters and blood and maybe dead skin, dead, it destroys it. Not good. Steam is really dangerous because it's so hot. Here's the formula. How do we know? Of course, in the heat section, we have three formulas. One is for the hot, and one is for the cold phase change. This is the hot phase change formula. We're going to hot phase change from gas to liquid. Q equals mH of V. The M is the mass, 2.75 grams. H of V is a constant, 2,260 joules per gram. The grams in the numerator cancel the grams in the denominator. You multiply this across 6220 joules. That happens to have uh, three significant figures. 6215 gets rounded to 6220. It's going to hurt like heck. Hurt like heck, right? All right. Which phase change takes more energy? If heat is added at a constant rate, BC, the cold phase change, is always much shorter than DE, which is the hot phase change. How come? How come? Because BC is about the heat of fusion and DE is about the heat of vaporization and the numbers are really different. The heat of fusion is 334, the heat of vaporization is seven times bigger than that. So the top part is a lot more energy then the cold phase change, the hot phase change is an enormous thermochemical event and the cold phase change, you can do it in your hand. Which phase change takes more energy? Vaporizing. If heat is added at a constant rate, it's just what I just told you. BC only requires 334 joules per gram. If you have 10 grams, well, it takes 10 times that. But if it takes 10, 10 times that, it'll take 10 times for D also. It doesn't matter how many grams you have. The cold phase change, is 334 as a constant, and the hot phase change is 2,260 as a constant, joules per gram. The more grams you have, the more joules it is, it's still a much bigger number on the hot side. Now, the reverse is true. To melt one gram of H2O means you have to add 334 joules. To freeze one gram of H2O at the freezing point, you need to remove 334 joules. Thermochem. It takes 2,260 joules per gram to either vaporize or condense one gram of water. When you want to vaporize it, you have to add heat. It's endothermic and it gets hotter. Or when it condenses, it removes heat exothermically and you get burned. But one gram to vaporize requires 2,260 joules. And in reverse, when one gram condenses, it will release the same amount of energy, which makes sense. It's like, it's like a rock. You carry a rock up a hill, it takes a certain amount of energy. When you throw the rock down, it releases that much energy. That's why a big rock coming down a hill is very dangerous. It's really hard to lift it up. It takes all that effort. 
Well, all the energy it took to lift up, that's all the energy it's going to release to come down. And that's why a rock coming down the hill is something to avoid. Of course, it's going to hurt you, right? The bigger the rock, the more energy it takes to get up the hill, the more energy it's going to take to come down the hill. Same here. If it takes 2,260 joules to vaporize, 2,260 joules is going to be released to condense. Two-way street. Thermal count. Two-way street. Now, the amount of energy that's required to change the temperature of water. No phase change now. We're just gonna change one gram of water. We're gonna have it really cold, 273, 273 Kelvin liquid. We're gonna make it 274 Kelvin liquid. It stays liquid, it's already melting. It's cold, but it's liquid. We're gonna take one gram of water and make it one Kelvin hotter. How much energy does it take to do that? 4.18 joules. Now, you could never know that. How could you ever know that? You don't even have to know that. I have it written down for you. It's called the specific heat capacity constant and for water. Now, let me talk about this. The constant has a, has a really cool, funky units, but the amount of energy, if you have just one gram of water and you put it in your mouth, it's zero degrees, it's really cold, to heat it up to 273 by one unit of temperature, 4.18 joules, easy. You could do that in a second. Really, your mouth is that hot. It takes just 4.18 joules to increase the temperature of one gram of water by one Kelvin or by one centigrade, because they're the same thing. The change in temperatures are equal. Now, what about this? You have water, one gram of it, and it's already at 316 Kelvin. That's pretty warm. You want to make it one gram of water, 317 Kelvin. You want to increase the temperature of one gram of water by one Kelvin. How much do you add? 4.18 joules. In order to make one gram of water, one Kelvin hotter, you have to add just 4.18 joules. That's a lot less than the heat of fusion or the heat of vaporization constant. This is, well, it's not zero, but it's, it's really low. It's easy to change the temperature of water. Easy, right? Each gram takes a little bit of energy. Now, what if you want to make it colder? From 368, you want to make it colder. You have one gram of water that's at warm 368, but you want to make it one gram, get one Kelvin colder. How much energy do you have to remove from that? Well, if it's one gram and it's one Kelvin, 4.18 joules. The specific heat capacity constant is the amount of energy it takes to make one gram of something get hotter or get colder by one Kelvin. Here we go. You put 375 grams of cap water into a fridge. It's 294 Kelvin, that's like room temperature. And you cool it down to 275 Kelvin, which is pretty damn cold, right? It's just two Kelvin hotter than the freezing point. So it's gonna be really cold water. How much energy do you have to remove from this glass? 375 grams, think about it. My seltzer, once more, is 355. This is 355 grams, a whole can. So this is a little bit more than a can of seltzer, a big glass of water. It's at room temperature, which you could probably drink and enjoy. Eh, not too hot. It's not hot, but it's not really refreshing. 275 Kelvin. If you're a hot, sweaty, exercise person, you drink this water, mm, it's going to brace you right up. It's going to make you really feel better. How much energy must be removed? Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to look to the, the back of the reference table. And I'm going to put one more thing that I'm going to write down right there. See what I wrote on the top? Triangle T. Now, the triangle means change in temperature. Triangle T, change in temperature. Delta. Delta is a Greek letter. Capital Greek letter Delta is a triangle. And that is symbolically means in science change, the change in temperature. We have a change in temperature problem. Now, when we have a freezing or melting problem, it stays at the freezing or melting point. There is no Delta T. When we have a heat of vaporization problem, when we're steam condensing or water boiling into a gas, there's no temperature change. But in this problem, in normal life, we have a temperature change. If I spilled some of my seltzer down the back of your shirt, the cold seltzer would have to warm up to your body temperature. You're hotter than my seltzer is. 
and it would be a change in temperature, but not a change in phase. So this is a change in temperature, not a change of phase. So the formula we're going to use on the back of the reference table is this. All right. Looks like the problem changed a little from 294 to 275. I actually added some significant figures here. Um, I make some quirky boo-boo sometimes. Let's, let's see how this works out. I forget how many significant figures are in the problem, but it did just change and I noticed it. Now, how do you say this formula? The way I say this formula is Q equals MC delta T. Some of you are going to end up saying Q equals M cat. It's not M cat, but you can say that because the delta looks kind of like a capital A, but it doesn't look like a capital A. It's a triangle. But Q equals MC delta T. What do these letters mean? Uh oh. Luckily, we have this heat section and we can go over here. Q still equals the heat in joules, M still equals the mass in grams. C is a constant called the specific heat capacity constant which is in table B. The specific heat capacity constant for water happens to be, well, we'll see it in a second, 4.18 joules per gram dot Kelvin. That means it takes 4.18 joules of energy for every gram of water to go up or down by one Kelvin. If you're adding heat, it gets hotter. If you're removing that heat, it gets colder. And then you have to multiply it by the delta T in Kelvin, the change in Kelvin temperature. So you have to know the, the start and the, the end temperature, the difference is going to be the delta T. So what do we got here? We have 375.0 grams. That's got four significant figures. The C value, because this is a, a glass of water and not a glass of mercury, which has a different C value. This is a glass of water. So the C value for water, the specific heat capacity constant for liquid water, 4.18 joules per gram dot Kelvin. And how did I get the delta T? How did I get the delta T? Hmm. I don't know. Where did that 81 come from? It looks like there might be a little mistake in this slide. So let's see if we can't figure this out. The 294 minus 275 that's supposed to be just 19 Kelvin. So I think there's a boo-boo here, and I'm going to fix this as we speak and see if we can't see if we can't make this, this go, right? There's 375 grams of water times the constant and the delta T, it goes from 294 down to 275, and the difference would be 19 Kelvin. Now to do this math. I'm going to put in 375 times 4.18 times 19.00, and I'm going to get the next number, which is slightly different than what I have. I wonder who made this slide. I'm not sure. So let's change these numbers to the right numbers, 29,782.2. And that's going to round with four significant figures to 29780 oh, joules. And I'll hit save. I wonder who made this slide. I don't understand. See what my, see what my phone says? 29782.5. So 29780. Oh, Joules with four significant figures. So if you put this water in the fridge at room temperature and you want to make it cold, how much energy does it take? You have to remove 29,780 joules in order to do that. All right, we're getting near the end of the slideshow. Sorry about that boo boo. I don't know what to say other than oops. Let's say you have a centigrade thermometer and you have to do a thermochem problem. You have to do it in Kelvin. But if you only have a centigrade thermometer, what are we going to do? Don't worry. First of all, it's chemistry. Never worry. Now, in this problem, we're going to assume the temperature change goes from 24 centigrade to 95 centigrade. We're going to heat some water up. Put some water from the, from the tap. Put it on the Bunsen burner. It gets hotter, but you don't let it boil. It gets up to 95 degrees. How much temperature change from 24 to 95? 
Well, it's going to be 71 Kelvin, 71, 71 centigrade. But look what happens. We're not going to take 71 centigrade and convert it into Kelvin. We have to change both the starting and ending temperatures into Kelvin first. 24 degrees centigrade is the same as 297 Kelvin. 95 centigrade is the same as 368 Kelvin. The difference between centigrade temperature is 71 degrees centigrade. The difference between, I can't know if you can see my thing, is the difference between the Kelvin temperatures is 71 Kelvin. The change in temperature both times is the same amount of change. It's just two different scales, the centigrade scale and the Kelvin scale. But each unit of temperature is the same amount of energy. It's just on a different scale. The change in temperature in centigrade equals the change in temperature in Kelvin. It's the same number, different units. So if you have a centigrade thermometer, figure out what the delta T is and just change it to K because the change is the same, not the temperature. The change in temperature is the same. You actually need to do this math. You need to get your calculator right now. 95 take away 24. Yeah, I'll do it and you can see. Clear. 95 take away 24 equals 71. Now, clear. This time I'm going to do 368 take away 297, also 71. You need to be able to understand this. This is a really important, I don't know what you call it even. But this is important. The change in temperature in centigrade is exactly the same as the change in temperature in Kelvin with a different unit. Same amount, different scales. Now, there are 100 units of energy between freezing and boiling in the Celsius, zero and 100. Now, for Kelvin, there also are 100 units because it goes from 273 to 373. See in the red? 100 take away zero is 100. There's 100 increments. 373 in blue take away 273 is 100 increments. Each unit of Kelvin and each unit of centigrade is the same amount of the scale, except they're on different levels. Right? The Kelvin has higher numbers, but they, they move at the same rate. The delta T in centigrade is equal to the delta T in Kelvin. All right, last problem. A pot has 650 grams of water at room temperature, 24 degrees. You want to make some macaroni and cheese. So you turn on the oven, but all of a sudden your best friend shows up with pizza, and so you turn the stove off. The water is at 95 degrees. You heated it from 24 all the way up to 95. Then you turn the stove off. Your dad's going to say you wasted energy. You heated up that water for nothing. Now you're going to eat pizza. Who's going to pay for all that heat? That heat's got to be paid for. Whether it's electrical gas, it gets paid to NYSEC. Even if it's a wood fire, somebody's got to cut the wood. There's pay. Somebody's got to pay for that waste of energy. That kind of stuff drives me crazy. How much energy got wasted? How much energy did it take to warm up this water for nothing, to throw it down a drain? This is a change in temperature math problem. So we're going to have to go to the heat section, and we're going to pick the delta T formula. And we're going to put in... Q equals MC delta T. This is the only formula we use for a change in temperature math problem. Now, heat, how much heat did you waste? That's Q. The mass here is 650 grams, 650 points, three significant figures. C value for liquid water. I don't remember it. You don't have to remember it. It's right here. Where is it? Right there. Specific heat capacity constant. It takes 4.18 joules to make each gram of water get one Kelvin or one centigrade hotter. What's the delta T? 95 take away 24. So let me do that. I'll get my calculator going. 95 take away 24 equals 71. So 650 grams times 4.18 joules per gram dot Kelvin and then 71 Kelvin. I'm going to write on this slide now. I haven't written yet, but this is important that you be able to see how this works. I'm going to say these grams are going to cancel the grams right here. This is numerator. This is denominator. This Kelvin is in the numerator. 
it's going to cancel this Kelvin in the denominator. So when we get the answer, Q is going to equal, the only unit left is going to be joules, which is good because we want to get joules as an answer. And so when we multiply this, 650 times 4.18 times 71.0 equals 192,907, which we're going to round to three significant figures. There's three significant figures in the mass, there's unlimited significant figures in the constant, and then there's three more significant figures in the temperature. Three significant figures. All right, what's next? Are we going to do this one? Let's do this one. We'll finish this one and we'll be done. I forget what I said, but this slideshow is going to go to 51. You want some mac and cheese. So you put 650 grams of water, 24 degrees. Right, this is hard now, right? Same thing. 650 grams, that must be the magic number in your kitchen. 24 degrees again, same temperatures. And then you text your best friend forever and you forget about eating forever. Your mom yells, who left this pot on the stove? And you get there and you realize not only is it boiling, but 35 grams of water has vaporized. You turn the stove off, you decide to eat out. Your dad's probably yelling about how much energy did you waste. That's what I would be doing. So what happened? You get a pot of water at 24 degrees. You put it on the stove. You add in heat, you add in heat, you add in heat. At some point it gets hotter, 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 hotter. It gets to the boiling point. And you're still, you're forgetting about it because you're playing with your damn phone. And then somebody says, your mom in this question, who left this pot on the stove? The water's boiling. And you realize, oops, I forgot. And you go check it because you got a scale. You weigh and say, oh my goodness, I boiled away 35.0 grams of water. I kept heating it and heating it and heating it. And 35 grams of the liquid has turned into steam and escaped into the kitchen. It's probably condensed on the kitchen window too. How much energy did it take to do this? You got to think about this. It's a tricky one now. First, you got to warm all the water up because if it's 24 degrees, it can't boil. First, all of the water has to get warmed up. So first, we're going to warm it up. Q equals MC delta T. So what are we going to plug in here? The mass. 650 grams. How much energy does it take to warm water up? The C value, the specific heat capacity? 4.18 joules for every gram for every Kelvin. And what's the change in temperature? From 24... That doesn't look like a right number. I'm a little nervous about that, right? 100 minus 24. Hmm. Who made this slide? This is supposed to be 76, right? Because it's at 24. And to get to the boiling point, it's going to be 100. Then we're going to have to multiply. I'm going to check this math now. 650 times 4.18 times 76. And that equals a different number than I have here. I am so sorry. Who made this slideshow? You know, in class, I could just talk my way through this. But now that it's a Zoom, it's got to be perfect. And you know what? It's hard to be perfect. 492. That's the number I got. And with three significant figures, I'm going to make this 206 thousand joules. I'll hit save and we'll go back from the current slide. So first you got to warm all the water up. That's how much energy it takes. Now you vaporized not all of it, just 35 grams of it. So now to vaporize we can use Q equals M H of V, right? And then the next slide up oh, there's gonna be a mistake, right? Because this has still got to be 206. But we'll look at the purple. 35 grams of it goes 2260 joules per gram. Q equals MH of V, the mass, how much energy, and that equals 79,100. So let's go back a slide, 206 on the top and 79,100. So the next slide, I'm gonna to have to change this. This has to be 206. So let's change this math, 206,000 and 79,100, and that's going to equal a different number, 285,100. And with three significant figures, it's going to be 285 joules total. Now, in real life, thermochem is not just one thing. Sometimes it's two things. Warm up some water and boil some of it away. 
and we didn't boil oil all of it away. We only boiled away some of it. So we have two different masses here. It's the joules from the first plus the joules from the second equals the total joules. Sorry for the little mix up at the end, but yeah, I don't really care. You know, it's a mistake. I'll fix the slides, but my slideshow is going to be forever, forever messed up in my Zoom because it took a long time to make this and I'm not going to redo it for one boo boo. Peace, love, and chemistry. I love Thermochem. I hope you love it too. Bye-bye.